My name is Trebes Thompson. I'm a former glass artist and writer down in Newark, Delaware. I started basic stained glass about 20 years ago. I had not had any formal instruction or uh, had also not shown any particular aptitude for art. And consequently, when I decided to paint stained glass, I was at a real disadvantage. Um, the skill that go into traditional painting requires decades. Um, to get and I had neither the money nor the time to pursue them in a traditional manner. Despite this, I was welcomed into the glass community with open arms. I was befriended by a lot of terrific painters and I received some scholarships from the American Glass Guild. I took some workshops and uh, I started painting. I got a lot of encouragement to do so. I painted pieces about overconsumption, about religious hypocrisy, uh, about having depression and suicidal thoughts. I did pieces about body image. I did a humorous series um, of panels about my life on the farm. I persevered through a lot of personal hardships. Uh, I battled with head and neck cancer, divorce, um, foreclosure on my farm, the death of my best, best friend, my cousin, um, all three grandparents. Uh, and then seven years ago, I was diagnosed with narrow gap glaucoma and paraphernalia macular telangiectasia type 2, also known as MACTEL. Uh, it's a rare condition that affects about 3,000 people worldwide and um, it is destroying my central vision. Um, after I was diagnosed, I went through a severe bout of depression where I could not get out of bed for about a month. But I decided that I had to uh, cram as much seeing as I could into what independent life that I had left. And I decided to make some visual memories. So I set out on a cross-country trip. Uh, I was gone for about two months. Uh, I also spent a month in Australia and managed to get in a, vis a uh, kind of a vision quest into Barcelona to study Gaudi, who was a personal hero of mine. And after that trip, I decided that I really needed to just live in the now, not worry so much about the future, and to, um, make art in different ways, really adapt what I was doing. And, you know, I, I wondered, you know, I felt like I was losing everything. How could I, it was curtailing my driving. Uh, it was, I could no longer target shoot or do archery or do a lot of the things I, I loved. And I really, you know, wondered how it would impact my glass. Um, I couldn't solder with any accuracy. I couldn't paint with any, you know, detail that I had before. Um, and someplace in this time, uh, another of my cousins really challenged me to document the um, journey that I was undergoing, losing my sight. And the result of that is this, this piece that's been accepted into this exhibition. And it's a triptych. Uh, it's three panel room divider piece. The piece on the left is the first piece that's called Losing Sight. And the glass st starts off um, as translucent. Um, my glasses are reimagined as butterflies in this piece. And um, the, first, the first panel, the left-hand side, is kind of cheerful. It's upbeat. It's the sort of thing after you've gotten a di devastating diagnosis that's infused with those things that people tell you. Like, oh, you know, science will catch up and they'll find a cure and I'll pray for you and God's got this. And um, the only place that I use totally clear glass is behind my glasses so that you can see uh, what I see. There's a lot of textured and cross-hatched uh, glass that represent my inability to see straight lines. And as you move towards the center of the screen, um, you can see little pops of sickly colored glass that start to pop through and darker pieces of glass. Um, there's a clock in the center of it. 
um, and it's actually not a clock when you look at it. You'll see that it's made up of the alphabet. And this represents uh, the fact that I get a lot of misinformation consistently from my eyes now, and I really have to pay attention to what I am seeing. The second central panel is called Taking Flight, and the butterflies are still there, but they're rust-colored, um, less pretty, more uh, gritty reality. Um, and the central part is taken up by St. Cecilia, who was not blind herself, but her 13th century biographer and later Chaucer um, associated her with blindness. She was a piece that I painted while I was in Italy, and uh, I cut her into approximately 350 tiny pieces for this, and there's two levels of meaning uh, personally for that. Um, the first is that my facial recognition now is very poor, beyond about 12 feet. Um, and the uh, second layer of meaning is about grids. They use a thing called the Amsler grid to uh, ascertain how much more of your rods and cones have died since the last time that they saw you. You'll see a distortion in a grid. So she's reassembled in a grid. Uh, to represent that distortion. And um, also as an artist, when you destroy a previous work, that's almost a taboo kind of thing. Um, and it's very difficult to do. So she's cut apart and um, reassembled. And I have removed her eyes in this piece and replaced them with the eyes from a chewed up dog toy. It's creepy, it's meant to be creepy. Losing your sight is Terrifying. Um, there are also, the original clock uh, was part of an, another panel that I did kind of exploring this losing sight topic. I've removed that and installed it into this panel. And there's also some pieces from another piece that I did called God's Eyes, Fish Eyes, God's Eyes, My Eyes. Um, the final panel is called Going Dark. And as you move across it, there's more sickly colors, more sickly spots, and the glass gets totally dark by the end of the panel. No light gets in. The butterflies are gone. They've been replaced by spiders made out of time pieces um, because we're, I'm battling time. We all are. Um, the eye chart in the center of that panel is distorted um, and represents the difficulty that I now have in reading anything. Um, the pieces are tied together uh, with the ribbons that go across each one with the titles and through round, uh, mirrored, spirally looking pieces that represent occlusions, indignities, headaches, uh, the things that I suffer uh, as a result of my condition. And as you move from the first panel to the last, they do get larger and kind of more obnoxious, intrusive. Um, they're mirrored, which gives the viewer a chance to see themselves in these pieces. And I think that we're all gonna have these discussions about loss of sight or hearing or other abilities as we age. I certainly did not expect to have them uh, in my 40s and 50s. But despite the, you know, kind of dark um, appearance of this piece, I remain excited about opportunities that I have in life and in front of me. I'm expanding my work uh, and exploration of glass and adhesives. Uh, I have plans to make some new pieces next year, possibly incorporating clay and braille for other visually impaired uh, art, art goers. I have several shows coming up in 2023 that I'm excited about and a possibility of traveling to the Arctic Circle uh, in Northern Finland next year. Um, <clears throat> And I thank the Workhouse for including me in this exhibition. Please visit them at www.workhouse.org. Um, I thank them for holding the show. I thank Judge Ruffner for selecting me and including me. And you can find out more about my work at treebsthompson.com. <laughs>